Hey folks, Lance Landrum here from Acre Air Conditioning and doing a little tutorial today on what an air conditioning maintenance could, should actually consist of. I want to make something very clear though, this isn't a how-to video. What I'm about to show you should be performed by a licensed professional that knows what they're doing. There's a lot of dangerous things inside this cabinet, one of which is high voltage electricity. This isn't a job for a weekend warrior. In order for this to be done right, it should take about an hour and a half. Now, I'm concentrating on the inside portion of your air conditioning system today because we're approaching our winter heating season, and this is the primary source of heat for most people. It's also the area where most mold or mildew or odors will originate from because the drain pan is here and the moisture that we remove from the house is collected here and drained away and so the moisture is always the source of any type of odor or mildew problem that we find in an air conditioning system. If you have an odor coming out of your ductwork, in all likelihood this is where it's starting and then going into the house. I'll be focusing most of my attention today for this client on the air handler I'll be testing the heat strips, cleaning it. Back to the professional part of this. I've got some tools set out today. All in all, these are all the tools I'll be using just to clean this part of the air conditioner today. And there's about $5,000 worth of test instruments and tools that I'll be using on this. So again, it, 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 this isn't something for the homeowner to do and this is not a how-to demonstration video. This is a sample of what we do for our clients at Acre Air, and it's designed to show you what we we do for our clients so that, that they know uh, what's included. Our industry has kind of a problem today because a lot of contractors skip a lot of these steps, and when we ask clients that are coming on board with us, they tell us that their previous contractor was usually in and out of the house within 30 minutes. Just so you know, it took me about 30 minutes to prep for this today and I haven't even began to clean the unit. So time is a great measurement of the quality of the, the maintenance on an air conditioner. It should take on average about an hour and a half. Now I've recorded the model and serial number of the client's air conditioner and this system was manufactured in 1997 and it looks pretty good actually for a system of that age and everyone always asks me how long should an air conditioner last and I, if I only knew and it could give everyone an answer it really depends on the quality of the installation and the amount of maintenance and care that's been given to the appliance over the life of the system if they get neglected they don't last very long if they're cleaned and maintained just like any other appliance your clothes dryer, your automobile they last longer if you take care of them. Now, you'll notice on the door here a warning about hazardous voltage. As I take off this panel, you'll see what I mean. There's some pretty dangerous stuff and it's, you take off the door and what you can see here is all of the wiring. You wouldn't want to touch any of these things that could potentially be deadly. And I'm always afraid of electricity and just to show you what I'm talking about, we put a voltage tester on here. All of these are live and one wrong touch and you're going to have a bad day. So with that being said, safety is first and I'm going to remove the door of the coil section here. And this is what we refer to as the evaporator coil. I'll be focusing a lot of attention here with the cleaning because all of your home's breathing air blows through this appliance six to ten times an hour on average. If this is dirty, the air in your house is going to be dirty. If there's anything growing in this drain pan, all of your home's breathing air is going to be blown across this surface before it blows into the house. If this is clean, the air in the house is going to be pretty clean. Now, one of the things that we do we always check to make sure we're not losing any refrigeration. And we use a device, it's a refrigerant leak detector, and we check all of the wells from the factory, make sure we're not losing any gas. If we need to tighten something, I can take care of that while I've got the door open. Now, a big mistake that everybody makes, and I even know air conditioning um, 
amateurs that tell people to pour bleach in their drain line. It's, it's the most common mistake that I hear on a day-to-day -day basis. Bleach is a corrosive. They put bleach in a plastic bottle because it eats metal. And if your bleach gets into this section, and it actually looks like there's, there's been some bleach in this system. If you look at the corrosion here in the rust, this metal is getting eaten away. In fact, there's a big chunk of it gone right here. Bleach is the worst thing you can pour into your air conditioning system to clean it. It does way more harm than good. And if you look into this drain pan, there's quite a bit of, I'll show you something gross. This is what is in the drain pan. This is the kind of sludge that washes through this drain pan into the, the pipe there, the, the, the drainage pipe, and that's what clogs up the drain line. This is why maintenance is so important just so we can get this sludge out of there. Not, not something that you want to be breathing and blowing your home's air into. Now, we're approaching heating se season, and as I'm here today, it's actually pretty cold. Last night it got down to about 50 degrees, and for us in Florida, that's pretty cold. I will be testing the heating portion of this system. Now, this air handler serves as the air conditioning and the heating, but I want to make sure that this client has safe heat so that they don't have to worry about fire or anything like that. And I'll test that out, make sure that's all good to go. Another thing that I'm going to be paying very, very close attention to the blower section. It's kind of difficult to see, but if you look in there, there's the blower motor. And if you look around the other side, you can see into the blower. It's very dirty. And the blades on these blowers need to be clean. Just like an airplane wing that gets ice on it, if these blower blades get dirty, they don't move air properly. And one of the telltale signs I'll find is when I take a pressure reading on the ductwork, if it's high or low, it could be an indication that the system is dirty. Now, a less experienced technician isn't going to have a test instrument like this and may misdiagnose a problem and try to sell you a new air handler when all it really needs is to be cleaned. So, this is where hiring a professional trained technician really comes in handy. Someone that knows what they're doing and isn't just in your home to try to sell you a piece of equipment. Now, as I clean the system, I'll be using numerous different tools to get in there where I need to get to clean it. I'll be using some professional grade cleaning materials that I spray into the coil. Before I leave, I'll even be introducing a, a sanitizer into the ductwork. And that way, if there's anything that's traveled into the duct system itself, I'll be able to eliminate that with my sanitizing device here. Now I've got an infrared camera that allows me to look inside the coil and really get an up close view of what I'm up against and how much cleaning I'm going to have to do today. And this coil is about what I would expect on a 1997 system. Before I leave today, I will also check the refrigerant charge on this system. This is a heat pump, and this client actually has two sources of heat. If the air handler is not able to keep up, the uh, uh, system has a backup heat source and will engage. 